you guys know that I have sort of a um, a fond time. My ear hurts. Uh, I have a good time responding to uh, specifically Dennis Prager. Uh, I like the De- the Prager U stuff is fine or whatever, but uh, his little fireside chats are just like um, I don't know. You get to hang out with the dog and it snores, and then Dennis Prager prattles on about something he's super butthurt about, pretending not to be butthurt. Um, it's just it's always a good time. Anyway, Dennis Prager went on Newsmax, uh, a very reputable place, and he said some crazy shit. And I think maybe, I think maybe it'd be good, <laughs> maybe it'd be good to let you guys know about this. Uh, fair warning: this is gonna be. Pretty fucking wacky, okay? If you haven't seen this yet. <laughs> Good old Newsmax. Good call, baby boo. Oh, thank you, Dodging Good Flames, call. for the prime. Appreciate that. Let me turn this up a little bit. Here we go. What she found funny was that she doesn't have a magic wand. But somebody in her party has a magic wand. The reason we're paying so much is because the magic wand of the Democratic president was to destroy the uh, the energy independence of the United States of America. <laughs> With one magic wand, the man ruined our economy. Oh, fuck. Did you know that our economy, the American economy, is actually 100% oil? That's actually true. Um, everybody I know works in oil. Ruined the ability of the, of the lower and middle class We're to pay their energy bills. Hmm. 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 Now, interestingly, as a leftist, I have a solution for this. Simply don't commodify energy. Smart. Smart. As in Germany, by the way. Uh, it, this is not just unique to the United States. A- anywhere that you have people who are governed by fear of global war they have the same like five clip or like uh, a <laughs> shutterstock they they went to the shutterstock website and bought like three or four different uh, these are sort of like oil lines pictures and they keep just rotating through them uh, 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 an idiotic them tubes sick fear of damn of, is that a derrick extinction of the of the i prefer uh i'm not a big fan of oil derricks more of an oil kyle fella a bios it's a terrible joke fear i mean do you understand the <laughs> the the nonsense that we live with it, it, it it's it, if we survive this as a free country historians will just ask how did this happen how did people get governed by irrational fears it's it's so interesting that every single time a Democrat is in office, and, and yeah, the picture you just sent in chat is perfect. Um, every single time a Democrat is, is in office, it's this shit. Every fucking time. Every single time. Which is wild, because I have never paid higher gas prices than when George W. Bush was in office. Okay? That was high gas prices. Uh, gas prices now are, are not not that bad. I mean, they're not great, but like, it's gas prices. It happens. There's ebbs and flows. We're Americans. We're used to this shit. Whether whether it is of of the non-vaccinated who, who what are he's just mad about other stuff now. Pariahs of America, as I have not seen in my lifetime. The the pariahs of America is that he has not seen in his lifetime. He's about to say the wacky shit now. Here comes the wacky shit. You ready? So he just said. The, the unvaccinated in the country are the most pariah de pariahs to ever pariah. They're the, the, if you don't know what that means, they're social outcasts. Any pariah group. But he already said some rat, wacky shit. Here's the wackier shit. Like, uh, like this. During the AIDS crisis, can you imagine if, if gay men and intravenous drug users, who, who the, the, were the vast majority of people with AIDS, had they been... Uh, pariahs the way the the non-vaccinated are what <laughs> okay this motherfucker was in his like 50s during the 80s right what, does he not recall the AIDS crisis even a little I actually hadn't watched this I'd only read the quote it's worse when he says it because he like 
very, very determinedly, like, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know how, like, in the 80s when the AIDS crisis was around and, like, everybody was just like, oh, it's, it's the gays. We should protect them. Everyone's fine. Like, what? Was he in a coma? Do you think he was, like, have you ever seen that movie with Brendan Fraser? Blast from the Past, I believe that it's called. And he just wakes up after, uh, like, he fell asleep in the 50s and woke up in, like, the 90s. This, this must be exactly what happened. He must know, right? He must. He was there. I don't know. Seems a little weird, dude. So that's that's a very wacky thing to say. Very wacky, Dennis. But it would have been inconceivable. And it should have been inconceivable. They it was not inconceivable. It was con it's conceivable. It was conceived. They should not have been made pariahs. Mm. But, uh, but yeah. this is well, kosher. This well. is okay. You can make the non-vaccinated. So. Okay, but but here's the here's a big difference. If you have AIDS and you pass by me in the grocery aisle, I'm not gonna catch it. If you have COVID and you pass by me in the grocery aisle, I could catch it. Unless you're coming, shitting, and bleeding on everything, I'm not gonna catch your AIDS. Or unless you seduce me, which I mean, you know, you know. But please dis disclose that kind of shit. That's dangerous. But COVID, I could catch it from just, like, sharing a bus with you, dude. That's not reasonable. That's not a reasonable thing to not be, you know, when... <laughs> it's, it's a communicable disease. How do you not give a shit? This is the same guy, by the way, that a week ago uh, came out with a video. He's like, I had COVID, and I was out hugging thousands of people. So a bunch of people are going to die because of Dennis Prager. Dennis Prager has enough money to avoid death in this scenario because, uh, you know, you can get, like, antibody treatment and stuff. But, wow. Xenon Eggsman with 100 bitties. Uh, can you imagine if black... <laughs> quote, can you imagine if black people had been made socially second class and segregated from white people? That would be inconceivable. <laughs> I mean, he certainly doesn't think that that happens, right? He doesn't, he doesn't think there's racism at all. Let's see if these last three seconds get wackier. So... Uh, it, it's a different America. It's not a, I mean, it's a different America, I guess, because we're, it's not the same time. But as far as, like, <laughs> uh, just being, 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 <laughs> I just, they're not really the same thing at all. I'm trying to be charitable and I can't be. There's nothing, there's nothing very similar about, about that. I can't, I can't just, like, catch AIDS from you being around. You know what's interesting, though? I actually, when I was a kid, uh, I grew up, I was born in the late 80s, grew up in the 90s. AIDS crisis was like, we were on the back end of the AIDS stuff. And so AIDS, AIDS, AIDS was everywhere all the time when I was a kid. So I actually grew up with an innate fear of AIDS. And I thought, if someone touches your genitals, you get AIDS for a little bit. Which is super weird. But I genuinely thought that for a while. I remember being scared of that. Isn't that wild? Because of how... Th that's, just a, that's just a small anecdote of, like, my very straight Midwestern uh, <laughs> upbringing. Not even, not even understanding the actual, like, issue and still coming away with, like, a cultural negativity towards AIDS. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, just temporary AIDS. <laughs> Don't tell Jake about super AIDS. Oh no, where'd you get that idea? I, I think I just uh, heard that um, my mom, my mom or dad, probably my mom. If honestly, um, I I feel like I probably was worried about AIDS or something, and my mom said because I'm a child, she probably said some, and I don't remember this. I'm just speculating. She probably said something to the to the effect of. Oh, well, uh, it's when two people touch their privates together or something. You know what I mean? She was trying to give me an answer, but, you know, give me a kid answer. Um, it is hot in here. What the fuck? Um, I'm actually turning on the AC right now. Ah, super, super warm in here. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know where it came from, but uh, I imagine that was probably the, uh, the bad answer she gave me. But um, inadvertently, it gave me a little bit of a fear. Excuse me. There was, like, mythology around AIDS back then. I was in school at the same time, probably, and sex education led us all the fuck down. Yeah, there was, like, a, um... It was almost... <laughs> in a weird way... It almost, like... 
It was almost implied that AIDS just sort of happened to you. Not that someone had AIDS and then gave it to you. Does that make sense? Like, it would, if someone touched your genitals, whether they had AIDS or not, AIDS could happen. Does that make sense? That was almost kind of like how kids were talking about it. Like, wash your hands. You know what I mean? It was really weird. 